What is happening to gold now? Is silver about to crush it? Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. It is my pleasure to have with me Mukaram Majud. Many of you already knew Mukaram. If you watch my live stream, you know him. But for those who are new to him, he is the head of trading at bullionite.com and the chief investment officer at Blackstone Commodity Group. I've said this many times. He knows his physical precious metals. He knows his stocks. He knows other commodities. What's more, he has actually helped several of my subscribers diversify their investments into physical gold and silver. They directly, I, I get emails from them saying, thank you so much for hooking me up with Makaram. He has been a godsend. And he actually helps people trade like a boss, okay? <laughs> Even in crypto, which you know if you follow my channel, that ain't Yankee, okay? But he's done it and he's done it for like 15 years. Mukaram, I gotta ask you, what is happening to gold now? And is silver gonna crush it? Well, it's interesting, you know, um, thank you again for having me. It's always great to my come pleasure. on your show. And you know, there's a couple of things we need to look at. When you look at the physical gold market and silver, yep. um, I think the important thing is to understand that gold is in a short term downtrend. It's okay to say that, you know, if you're a physical metals holder or if you're buying gold or if you're in gold in your IRA, it's okay to lean into that. Should okay? we all just say that, you know, just, just like gold is, yeah, is taking down. Deep breath. And, say, and that's it's okay. A short term downtrend. Okay? Deep breath, right? Uh, yeah, deep breath. Because uh, okay. the more you lean into things that are difficult in in the investment world, mm -hmm. that's when you learn how to really crush it when the fundamentals begin to go your way. Okay. Right. Um, that's one of the. It's always easy when things are going your way to continue to do things and think, hey, you know, I'm doing everything correctly. But mm -hmm. if things are not going your way that's where you're really shaped as an investor, as a trader, okay? Your molding comes from that. It's so hard, that's it's hard. I, I have people telling me, I just bought gold and it's going down. What a lousy investment that was. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's not the right way to look at it. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I completely agree with it because it's not a lousy investment just because the price of gold has come down. Mm -hmm. You have to understand why gold prices are coming down, which we'll address, you know, based on your question. Yeah. Uh, but you also have to look at the reality of it, which is mm -hmm. it is in a short term downtrend. So I chose the words very specifically, okay. short term downtrend. OK, yep. there's nothing fundamentally like if you look at why you got into gold especially physical gold, because futures is a whole different ball game, right? And paper gold. Yes. We're talking about physical precious metals. Um, and especially if you're doing coins versus bars, there are all of the fundamentals that existed in 2020 mm -hmm. that caused gold to go up 30, 40% in price in the earlier part of 2020 yep. is still there or has gotten better. Reasons to buy gold has only intensified. That's what. That's how you have to look at it. Even if you look at what Powell, Jerome Powell, said today, mm -hmm. you know, um, at the at the speech that he made, um, and the comments that they've done, and that the big tech sell-off we've mm -hmm. had in the Nasdaq in the right. last week, the fundamentals to be in physical precious metals, both gold and silver, have only intensified. Both. It's just that the price action is in a short-term downtrend. Um, Quickly to answer your question about why, what's going on with gold? I think a lot of your viewers want to understand that, right? It's, it's very simple, okay? And if you look at the, the broader picture of this, let's just rewind a little bit. In 2020, gold behaved exactly the way it's supposed to behave. It behaved as a safe haven. When you had the COVID crisis come on, mm -hmm. you had the initial big drop in the stock market and mm -hmm. gold usually comes down with it. We, we've gone over that, the margin liquidation scenario, right. where gold comes down first and then gold turns around as the stock market keeps dropping. And that's why gold went to a new record high, not new monthly highs, but new record high mm -hmm. in 2020. Now, here's what you have to keep in mind. In that same time period, we all know that the COVID and the intensifying of, of the COVID situation Across the world, if you look at smaller countries, um, it really affected them mm -hmm. in, in terms of the economy. Mm -hmm. So the first reason, if you've been an avid precious metals you know, buyer or someone who watches precious metals, 
You have to understand the bulk of the physical demand for gold comes from central bank purchases. Absolutely. It's not your $50,000 or your $250,000 or your 10 grand that causes gold prices to go up. We don't have, yeah. you know, a hundred million dollars that we can buy gold sure. with in one day, but yeah. central banks. So, you know, I would urge your, you know, viewers and, and subscribers to go look at the major countries that buy physical gold during the course of a year mm -hmm. and put it in their reserves. And what you've noticed is in late 2020 and early 2021, their purchases have gone down, the central bank purchases. And it's a temporary drop. And here's the reason for that. Because one, as gold prices went to a new record high in 2020, their existing gold portfolio for these countries, I'm not talking about an individual, mm -hmm. but for a country, their portfolio increased in value. So it was an easier decision for them to liquidate some of their gold in order to pay for their economic stimulus yeah. programs okay. that they had to create to because of COVID. Right, right. Okay. Sense, yeah. Usually central banks don't like to sell their gold. They just want to keep hoarding and adding, adding gold. Mm -hmm. But when you go through a crisis as, as you know, as um, strong, as crazy as it was in right. 2020 and as um, depleting to the economy, you know, as it did in 2020, there are smaller countries that chose to sell some of their precious metals mm -hmm. in order to fund their stimulus programs, because they're not like the United States or right. some countries in Europe where you can print a lot of money and you have a very large GDP, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why you're seeing weakness in gold prices short term, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the other thing is, in, in a way, it's related to those countries, mm -hmm. but you got to look at India and China. Okay. India and China got significantly affected by the COVID crisis and therefore their individual citizens, their ability to buy gold as jewelry has tapered. That's what it is, you know, because yes. India and China are the biggest purchasers of gold in terms of citizens. I'm not talking about a country right now, you mm -hmm. know, but just as individuals, they, their incomes went down. They got a hit, in, you know, if you look at their industries, Therefore, because the economies are struggling, they didn't spend as much money on jewelry purchases as they did. And usually that's a lagging effect. A lagging, if you see gold a prices, lagging indicator. Yep. It's a lagging indicator. Yep. And that's yep. why you see. So it's not a, you know, it's not like, oh, gold is such a bad investment. Gold prices are coming down. Is it going to crash? No, it's because there is a mm. reason fundamentally that right. these things are coming up. The final point that I'd like to quickly make is... Mm. Gold in the late in, in late 2020 mm -hmm. or the, the, the late part of third quarter and the fourth quarter of 2020 definitely took a backseat to Bitcoin. OK, Bitcoin took all the attention from a, a normal investor, mm -hmm. like anyone you talk to, mm -hmm. like even if you go to, you know, mm -hmm. your hairdresser or your barber, <laughs> he'll talk about Bitcoin. today. Everybody's right? talking. Bitcoin. So everyone's talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Right? Litecoin and you know people who you know your Uber when you're in an Uber they're talking hey Bitcoin that's what they're asking so the attention has gone to Bitcoin which is normal whenever a market is creating new record highs and going up a hundred two hundred three hundred four hundred percent in a quarter you will get more money flowing into that sector and the other sector will be left left out pretty much you know, in a way that you, it doesn't deserve to be left out. Is exactly. it being left out being no more funds are flowing into it? Or is it actually being sold off because of Bitcoin? I, I would think it would keep it the same, not It's cause not being sold off. I think you're right. Okay. But the amount of inflows that sure. we saw in the ETF sector in 2020, yep. in the early part of 2020, is not as high as it was towards the end of 2020 because of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But one quick thing I want to let you know. Go ahead. Bitcoin has gone from a high probability trade to a low probability hold in the last month. Okay. So mm. Bitcoin has become extremely overbought. Mm. Anything that goes up three, four hundred percent in a quarter is no longer <laughs> a high probability hold. And I think some of your members will agree who I work with, yes. where we have coached on how yes. to ease off or scale they out of that me. and yes. get ready for the next, next yes. month. I've had, I've had people mention that to me that that's the coaching you're giving them. Coming back to metals for a minute, the demand for the physical is still high. It is bought up like that. 
It is hard to keep in stock and the premiums are through the roof. That's the other reason why I've been telling people take a pause on physical silver and look at the physical gold, not just because of the price drop, because also the premiums. Yeah, I think the premiums just skyrocketed when the short squeeze or, or the yes. perceived short squeeze in silver was going on, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. Uh, so how much is that? So much has happened since the last time we <laughs> no, had the show. A lot has happened, right? A lot has happened. Yeah. Uh, but it, that's how it is. And 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 the people mm -hmm. who know precious metals mm -hmm. and who go with the right kind of coins, like gold American eagles, silver right. American eagles, or, or a few other coins of the realm, they'll understand that those premiums mm -hmm. tend to get they will take they will get the advantage of those premiums when they get out of the market as well you know yep. sometime down the road um it's just that right now i think i agree with you when you look at gold versus silver mm -hmm. since gold's pulled back a lot mm -hmm. there might be a better opportunity in gold mm -hmm. for a little while but silver i'm very impressed with the strength of silver today is the first day that silver actually dropped what it should have dropped over the last week and a half to two weeks held up held up held mm -hmm. up as gold was getting hammered and hammered and hammered you know even with all this even with all this going on bank of america just reiterated their target for 2021 for gold to be at 2063 dollars wow. they just did that i think there a few like a few days ago they're seeing the big picture the longer term yep it's yeah because this you know, no matter how complicated the Fed is or however complicated they want to appear that they are, right, or as sophisticated they are, they can only do two things. They can only do two things. And they've proven this to us, like in every administration from Bernanke to to every everyone who's Yellen, changed. Yep, yep. Yellen, going back the whole, you know, 15, 20 years, they can only do two things. One, they can increase or decrease interest rates. Right. And the other is they can print money. That's it. And they're That's money. all they can do. You know, the Biden administration mm -hmm. is is very similar to the Obama administration in different in some ways. You know, so if you look at that, yeah. the first thing that they did was to print money. QE one, I mean, even the words quantitative easing one, right. two, and three all came during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the whole fact of buying up, buying bonds and and printing more money. So I really believe we do have an administration that wants to print more and more money. And the real asset is gold. The real asset is gold. And after this short-term correction and, and this, you know, different interest levels are looked at, you'll see that gold is going to be the asset that needs to go up in price because right, right now it's the most oversold asset. I'm actually waiting for it to get a little bit more oversold. Really? It looks really great on the charts. I want to quickly show a gold chart. Okay. I think it just so that people can, you know, because a lot of people are nervous about gold prices coming down, especially in our community, right? Like the physical precious metals community. Right. I'm not at all nervous about it. I do understand the frustration that it is coming down a little bit, but sure. let's have a look. This is a, um, a gold, you know, like you can see, this is a gold futures chart. It's a continuous spot contract, right? Um, but this is a weekly chart, okay, right now, weekly. That means at the bottom, we're not just looking at every day's worth of movement. But every candle in here is an entire week's worth of movement, okay? okay? And what you can see is one of the two biggest indicators that we use to track whether a market is overbought mm -hmm. or oversold, okay, is what's called an RSI and a stochastic. And we'll get into yes. that, especially, you know, in the trading uh, education classes that I have for right, right. members do who have done, who are learning a lot from this. Mm -hmm. um, what you can see here is in an RSI, if you are at or below 30, which is, this is the RSI. So it goes from 100 to zero, right? Yes. We are now approaching 30 right here. You see that yeah, I do. on the RSI. Mm -hmm. And the last time when on an uptrend, when we corrected and then we approached close to maybe 40, we went up significantly, right? So we've had this nice yep. uh, uh, sidestep kind of kind of run. That's the first thing. Understand that we're getting really oversold, not in a daily chart. It takes a, lo a lot of data for the weekly uh, to get over okay. oversold. So that's one. The other thing is the stochastic, you can see, has come down below 20. Uh -huh. Okay, anything below 20 to zero is extremely oversold. Now, what we're waiting for is this blue and this red line to cross because when it crosses, you see this right here in November, 
-hmm. in 2019, mm -hmm. when that line crossed below 20, then you had this massive run up about $500 in gold. Big, yeah. big run, yeah. actually yeah. $700 or so, I think a $700 run up. So we have not been this oversold. So it is exciting when you see uh, like a market like Bitcoin get extremely overbought, get very, very low probability on, on the trend now, not saying that it can't go higher over time, right? It's just that it might come down. And when that happens, when you get back to a market that is very, very oversold, um, it, it is exciting. It's just that it's gonna take a little while. It's gonna get to a support zone and you watch the price action. And I teach this to a lot of my students. Right, you watch the right. price action and upon the confirmation of that price action, you can be in an asset that has a high probability of moving higher. What I have noticed with the, your channel, Yankee, and the physical precious metals buyers who, you know, some of your members who are now signing up for these classes is that they're not just benefiting on the physical precious metals purchase and the timing of that, yes, but yes. they have stock portfolios. They have an IRA, yeah. they have a stock account at Charles Schwab or, sure. or wherever, right? Mm -hmm. And learning how to trade and, and, and getting the skill of mm -hmm. and learning how to create money will allow them to not only get better returns in their existing portfolio that they have that's outside of gold, right. They can also learn how to protect that money and get into the right sectors and know when to get in and out. You're, you're talking paper. You're, you're, stock. you're talking paper assets mostly, right? Yeah, paper regard? assets. Okay. Exactly. Any paper assets because everyone has an account. If people want to get in touch with you, um, obviously, you're going to put the information in the description of this video. They can reach out to you. You can talk to them just to see if it's something that they're interested in doing. I know more and more of my subscribers and some of my members keep saying, Mukarm's helping me, dude. I'm like, really? I said, yeah, loving it. So if you're interested, definitely give Mukarm a ring. Thank you so much for helping me out, man. I appreciate this time. Thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. And I hope you enjoy this. And I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.